Uh, my name is Lindsay Waters. I'm the executive editor for the humanities at Harvard University Press. I've been here for a long time, since 1984. I was at the University of Minnesota Press before that, and I, I've been developing books for a good long time. Once I jumped ship and jumped the teaching business and got into this business, this is, it's better this way. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had those three months off, but uh, modestly, what I'm trying to do is to transform the humanities, and the humanities need to be brought back into uh, full motion and ac activity. One of the coolest things that I'm involved in is this new literary history of America that's coming out in the fall of 2009. And it exemplifies exactly, I understand this in terms of Latour's and Benjamin's theories of interaction and, and Hutchins. This is the interaction of different people and things working together. Now we got things, because we gotta make physical books. We gotta have a budget, we gotta have money. That's all, these are all things that we're interacting with. But it takes humans too. And as we develop this, this project, this is the third one of these literary histories I've done. The first the second one I did was this huge history of German literature. But we got together a group of people, we made a plan, we've done two of these things. And there's kind of a rude, crude mechanical aspect of this of these literary histories, in that they follow a chronological ordering from the beginning to the end, depending on what we decide those things are. Um, with the French literary history we did, we decided that the first entry was going to be the Sermons of Strasbourg, which might be the founding document of French literary history or the founding document of German literary history. And therein hangs a tale. And the last e entry was on the 500th uh, episode of the TV uh, literary chat show called Apostrophe. And the, where you hear Valérie Giscard d'Estaing say that he would have given his entire political career to have written two short stories by Maupassant. And I hit, read that in my, as the manuscript as it comes in, and I say, this is not the U.S. of A. Because that, my president back at that time was the first Bush, and he would have given, he would have lost his whole political career if he had admitted that he'd written, read two short stories by Maupassant, let alone written them. So, so, but the, by the same, so, the, so this, this structure, we, 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 we have these meetings, and we, 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 and we, we come up with a document, perhaps a founding document, and we have our, the first meeting is a meeting in which we could decide that we're going to abort the mission. We have to have that possibility that we're going to abort the mission. Well, that's how we started with the French one. That's how we started with the German one. That's how we started the 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 um, the, um, the American one. But and then if we can come together, and we lose some people. We have to gain some other people if we do. If we decide to go ahead, and with this American one, we had 15 people, very a range of people. We got people who are. There's nobody who's 13 years old, but we got people who are 25 years old, and we got people who are 65 years old. Because it's America, we got a, one of the best movie critics in the world, David Thompson, in, involved in this thing. Um, we've got um, one of the best art historians, Michael, Michael Leja. We've got a great historian of technology from MIT team name, named uh, David Mendel. Because America wasn't going to make sense unless you brought technology into the picture. I did learn something from Walter Benjamin, which is you can't understand America without understanding how the technology plays a role in it. So, so we had various meetings, and we, we keep the meetings to a minimum, really. Oh, we had one meeting, can we get to get, can we get along? The second meeting, can we project what the table of contents will be? Can we adjust? Even the top people have to, we, this is democratic, or Rube Goldberg or Spike Jones, uh, or Spike Lee operation, something like this. But it's, but, it's, but it's been, this is really fun. And when we bring this book out, people are gonna, there are gonna be some obvious things in this book. There are 200 entries, each one of them is six pages long. None of them, they all have to be readable by regular people. Um, and, they all, and so there are books in there that I never heard of before, but they all, we made some deals with ourselves that, that because America is so in danger of losing uh, its sense of literature and literacy, which is that anything that came in had to have some sort of literature connection. So Bob Dylan, Chronicles. Chuck Berry wrote an autobiography. 
I don't want to give away that. The whole list is a trade secret, so it, we'll only unveil at the, at the last moment. But it, it's really, because we are, we are in the process of canon formation, all those awful things you weren't supposed to do over the last number of years that people were attacking. So that's really fun. <laughs>